Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Backer Designs. This week I'm featuring the Fond of Autumn bundle over on my blog, and I've got a 3D project for you. Um, this box holds a Little Debbie fall party cake. It's actually two cakes in here that fit right perfectly in this box. This is the perfect uh, bundle to make your fall uh, projects that aren't Halloween necessarily, but that are fall. All right, we are going to do water coloring, and so we're gonna start with that to give it some time to dry. I actually have my stamp set up on my Stamparatus, um, and we're going to stamp it on watercolor paper. All right, we're gonna use uh, Stays On. Uh, you'll notice that my stamp is stained black. That's okay. Um, it doesn't damage your stamp, but when you use stays on, it does leave some ink staining behind. Um, there are ways to clean that, uh, but it doesn't bother me. I actually kind of like it. I can see my stamp a little bit better. All right, the only part of this image that we need is this middle part right here. So I'm not gonna worry too much about inking up the whole image. I just wanna make sure that I've got that middle part. Those leaves, mostly. Okay, and we're gonna stamp that right there. I'm using watercolor paper. There we go. Now, I also need to stamp my flower and I didn't leave room for that. So, all right, grab another piece of watercolor paper. And actually, we don't even need to use our Stamparatus on this because it's so little. I've got it on a block. Stamp that and stays on as well. All right, let's paint. I love doing watercolor. It's one of my favorite techniques. I'm not an artist, but this makes me feel like an artist. All right, we're gonna use water painters, and as you can see, mine are well-loved. I use them all the time. You In your pack, you will get a skinny, a medium, and then this broad brush. For this, we're gonna use the skinny. I feel like I have a whole lot of little intricate images and if I get that big fat brush I will get out of the lines for sure. All right I've got old olive ink and I'm going to just dip my block there onto the ink. Now I want to get it nice and wet so I'm going to add some water. It's a pretty dark color um, so you're going to need to dilute it quite a bit. All right so now I'm using a paper towel to kind of dab off my brush and I'm just going to start here with the leaves. I, my image on my original project is pretty dark, so I'm gonna try to go a little bit lighter this time. Um, I didn't dilute my ink enough, I don't think. Now, another thing that you could do, this big image here has a die that cuts it into four different images. So if you're making multiple, multiples of this project, you could color the whole thing, cut it out with that die, and you would have um, th three or four images that you could use on your box. All right, so we're gonna color these leaves in with old olive. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time to dry, and I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of color in the middle. Okay, now let's do this one. You can also color these with Stampin' Blends. I have two other videos where I'm showing you how to do that. Um, you'll have to use a different ink if you do that. Um, and you could use watercolor pencils, which are fun. There's um, several ways for you to um, color these images. All right, do I have all of the leaves that we're cutting out? Yes. Now, I'm gonna take my my uh, water painter and grab a little bit of that ink on the on the edges right here like this and just try to add some dark right there to that center veining. See how it's kind of spreading out and just gives you a little bit of contrast. And that water will let it spread out. All right. Now let's um, do our flower. We'll come back in a minute and do our acorns. You wanna clean your brush really, really well. 
get a little bit of saffron on my block. I also got it on my paint, my water painter. I don't want that. I'm gonna squeeze the water out to get all of that green out of there. This is, um, I'm using a bowl of water, but it also has the water in the inside that you can use. All right, so let's just add the color to this. Oh, look, I should have colored my leaves before I cleaned my brush. The less diluted your ink is, the more vivid the color is gonna be. So I'm gonna come out here and get that non-diluted color and add that to here in the center, kind of give us a little, um, darker. I'm going to even pull it from my ink pad like that. All right, clean your brush real good. Let's grab a little bit more of that old olive. Now for our acorns, I'm going to color them, but I'm not going to worry too terribly much about them because we're gonna actually cover them up with our sentiment. All right, I'm gonna grab just a little bit. Oh, we gotta clean that brush again. A little bit of Cajun craze, just a little bit for the center of our flower. Okay. Now, I have early espresso here, and we just want a little bit. Add some water to that. And paint in the bottom so that they're nice and light. All right, and then get some of that non-diluted early espresso. I actually probably need a little bit more. There we go, to get those nice and dark. Ooh, see, ooh, that's completely non-diluted and it's very dark. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of brown stems like that. Now, one thing I wanted to do is add some color kind of in here. See how it just kind of pulls it all together? So I'm gonna, let's clean our brush, and I'm gonna really dilute this green. You can even use pear pizzazz to get a lighter green that's similar. And I'm gonna just kind of pull this color up here and fill in these spaces. All right, that looks good. I think we are ready to let it dry. Close up our ink pads and we'll make our box. All right, to create your box, you're gonna need a piece of soft suede that is eight by seven and three fourths. Now that's almost a square, so make sure you're on the right side um, for these measurements. On the, let's start on the eight inch side. We're gonna do half an inch, three inches, four and a fourth, and six and three fourths. Then you're gonna turn it to the seven and three fourths inch side and you're gonna do one and a fourth from both ends, which would be six and a half over here. All right, so grab your bone folder. You wanna burnish your lines. All right, this skinny line right here is gonna be the tab that we use to adhere our box together. All right, grab your scissors and on the skinny tab over here, we're gonna cut off the corners. And when I do that, I'm gonna cut this one at an angle. Okay, so just like that. Now all you're gonna do is cut these, all these score lines apart. All right, and there's your box. Now I'm gonna use tear and tape. And 
and we will peel off that edge right there, that backing. Whoops, got a little too aggressive with it. And then fold this down and fold this over and your box should line up perfectly. Now where that edge meets, I want to make sure that that's the back of my box. All right, so fold in the sides, then fold in the back first. Then take your tear and tape, put that on the front of your box, the front flap. It's the last one you wanna fold in. And then fold that down like that. All right, and there's your box. I'm not gonna adhere the top because um, we're gonna tie it closed with our ribbon. That way your recipient doesn't have to tear into the box to get it to open. I'm gonna use our natural ribbon, um, natural finish ribbon to tie it closed. And I'm not gonna do a bow. This is pretty big, bulky ribbon. So you don't need to do a bow. All you wanna do is a knot. Okay, so we'll close that up. Like that, you can kind of manipulate it to get those, those little edges to go how you want. And I'm gonna cut them off at an angle. There we go. All right, for the box front, we're gonna do something really cool. This die set has several dies. We'll use this to cut out our flower images, our larger image, the leaves in the middle, and then this one um, for the flower. Now this one will cut out the large image as well in one piece. The one that we're gonna use is gonna cut it into four different pieces. This piece is so cool. It's gonna just give us this texture right here. And let's do that. I've got two pieces of Cajun Craze. You're gonna need two pieces of Cajun Craze. The first one is gonna be for this design. This is a super intricate die. Um, it is gonna need a lot of pressure to get all of those, those little pieces cut. And I'm gonna get out all the little doodads that are left hanging. Well, maybe they don't wanna come out. There we go. And normally we put our dies in like this, right? In like that. But with this die, I'm gonna encourage you to turn it over so that the cut side is up and then just center your paper right there. Now look, it doesn't fit exactly, that's okay. We're just adding some texture, okay? So get that and get your plate, which I actually still have under here, and lay that on top. And then we're gonna run it through once and twice. All right, now look how beautiful that just came out, like no problem. All right, see how lovely that is? Now we're gonna use our um, dye brush here in just a second to get all of that off. Uh, but let's cut out our, our uh, watercolored images. This larger die, like I mentioned, is gonna cut this one out. And then we're gonna use the little flower for the flower. Run those through. My plates, I've seen better days. See how that one will cut that image apart? We don't need those pieces, we just want that middle, that middle um, image. All right, now grab your die brush, your foam pad that comes with it. The die brush is an attachment for your take your pick tool. And when you order it, it comes with this lovely little um, foam mat to help you get all of those little pieces out. Look at that. Now, when I cut this the first time, I didn't do it um, cutting edge up. And these little things were very hard to come out. They didn't cut very well. Um, or as well. So I encourage you when you use this die, when you use intricate dies, to give that a try. Facing, having the cut side face up. It makes a huge, huge difference. All right, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna adhere it onto another piece of Cajun Craze. It's just tone on tone. And I'm just gonna put a few dots 
there. Go easy with your, your glue because it will spread out. And then we're going to line these up. And adhere them. Let's hold it down for just a second. And there you have it. Isn't that pretty? It's just kind of subtle, tone on tone. You could do a different color behind there if you wanted to. All right, now grab your leaves. And we're going to put these on diagonal like this. I've got a label already cut out of basic white. And we're gonna stamp Autumn Wishes in Early Espresso right in the middle. See, you really can't see those um, acorns very much. And then we'll take our flower and whoops, uh oh, there we go. And we'll put that flower like that. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna get some linen thread. I'm gonna fold a piece in half so that I have two pieces, but I'm gonna treat them like one piece. I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna uh, tie a bow using, keeping the two threads together so that we have kind of a full fluffy bow. And then I'm going to take a mini glue dot and put that right there. All right, now to attach this to your box, just take some dimensionals and we're going to kind of hug that ribbon, kind of sandwich that in there. Like that and well let's see if I can get this this needs to lay down flat there we go and put that right there and there you have it a beautiful treat box that um, would would just make anybody happy this time of year <laughs> all right click the link here on youtube you'll hop over back to my blog there is a full supply list there as well as the measurements that you need for this box and two other fond of autumn projects all right everybody happy stamping bye